the Peak District, to me, is the most important national park in the whole of Europe because of where it is. It's completely surrounded by large industrial cities like Sheffield, Manchester. The mass trespass has been described as the most important event of civil disobedience, if you like, in the history of this country. So this was quite an important event. It was a deliberate mass defiance of the laws. We're going to defy these trespass laws. We're going to do it. If the police turn up, we'll have to take the consequences. What they were doing was actually demonstrating that we should all have freedom to go on open country where we shall do no harm. They stood up for the people and it's right that we should remember them. They put their bodies on the line. They themselves went, went on the hills, not in secret. They let everyone know what they were doing and they basically said, stop us if you want to. I could not believe that five young men had been imprisoned just for walking on the moors. Certainly it resulted in what we've got now which is the right to roam on mountain and moorland, but also for the creation of the national parks that we have. On April the 24th, 1932, four or 500 ramblers assembled here on the Hayfield Recreation Ground prior to making the mass trespass over Kinder Scout. To understand that trespass, I think you've got to know something about the background. I mean, most people worked in industrial occupations at that time, working class lads and lasses. Significant numbers of those would have been unemployed working class young people at the beginning of the 1930s. For a lot of people, either the hills were something they saw when they finished work in their smoky factories in Stockport and Manchester, or they were the place they went to escape from, from the unemployment and the grim reality of the Manchester during the Great Depression. The fact that, that they could get out to the Peak District for a sixpenny tram ride fare and then walk in this beautiful open country was so important to them. And there's nobody on that countryside. Okay? It's kept for the pleasures of a very small number of people, small number of landowners. The feeling was that, well, hang on a second, if it was being used, we could perhaps understand that, but it wasn't. And what was being denied was the opportunity to go walking in that area. And the frustration they must have felt, uh, it, it must have been incredible. And people like Benny uh, wanted to do something about that. They thought that was wrong. Benny Rothman, who led the mass trespass in 1932, a fantastic little character, a man of great principle. So I was the secretary, and had been for two or three years, of the British Workers' Sports Federation in the north. And, uh, of course, I was involved right from the very start. Working class lads like Benny could see this beautiful countryside, and yet to walk on it, they had to gain permission to walk on it. So they'll sit with the landowners, and the landowners will go, OK, you're deserving, you can go. You're not deserving, you can't go. Uh, and that's really why the mass trespass took place, to open up these moors to everybody. I think I would rather be there. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester Way. I get all the pleasure of a hard ball and play. I may be away. They said we're going to mobilise at a certain point and we're going to go and walk up on a spot which was illegal in essence. There was no permission given to do this in the Peak District. And they advertised the fact they were doing it, so there was a fairly strong police presence there. Uh, when they had their meeting at Bowden Bridge Quarry, just before they set out for the trespass, and Benny was pushed into place to, to give the address. So Benny, little lad, he stepped up to the plate and said, I'm going to speak, I'm prepared to take, I'm prepared to defy these laws because it's important. So, led by Benny Rothman, uh, about 400 of them set out from Hayfield on April 24, 1932, to deliberately trespass on Kinder Scout, which is the highest point of the Peak District. If there were enough of us, they couldn't turn us back. And they went up a path which had been uh, designated a right of way, but the only right of way to cross Kinder uh, about 35 years before. So, they were on a right of way when they set out. So the police couldn't arrest them for that. So when they got onto the hills, they met the gamekeepers. 
uh, gamekeepers and, uh, and the other hired helps lined up on the hills, the whistle blew and they left the footpath up onto the hills, far more than the gamekeepers could stop, but, they, but that didn't stop them trying and there were scuffles. Minor injuries and a few arrests, but most of the first passers were able to carry on. They got to the top and they met the contingent from Sheffield. And they had a bit of a victory meeting, then they all marched back their separate ways. The Hayfield, the Manchester Ramblers came back into Hayfield and six of them were arrested by the police and uh, subsequently um, sent for trial. Not incidentally on trespass charges, because there's no such thing, but for riotous assembly and public order offences and stuff like that. What made the campaign successful was not the direct action itself, it was the court case afterwards. It was when they stood up in court and proudly said, yes, we did it, yes, we'll do it again, and this is why we did it. I would like to start proceedings by advising the juries, whom I'm glad to see represent some of our most distinguished local landowners, not to be too concerned by the foreign-sounding names of some of the defendants. We live in a free country where every man has his rights. Also, I understand that a copy of a work by a Mr. Lenin, isn't he the Russian gentleman, was found in the pocket of one of the defendants and that another was selling copies of the Daily Worker. This should also not be allowed to interfere in your deliberations. Now, Rothman, what have you to say for your opening statement? We, ramblers, after a hard week's work in smoky towns and cities, go out rambling for relaxation, a breath of fresh air. But we find when we go out that the finest rambling country is closed to us just because certain individuals wish to shoot for about 10 days a year. Ramblers are forced to keep on footpaths where they exist and are denied the pleasure of rambling over moorland or climbing on the tops. The charges laid against myself and the other defendants here are an attempt to prevent ramblers from taking the mass action which will gain them access to mountains. The demonstration of April 24th was a peaceful demonstration to gain support for our contention of the right of access to mountains. This sort of thing must be stopped. There is no other country in the world in which people can express their opinion so freely. But they must stop at breaking the king's peace and making tumultuous scenes of this type. Rothman, you are sentenced to four months imprisonment. They didn't have any sort of formal defence. They defended themselves. Um, but it was a, a foregone conclusion that uh, they were sent down. The fact that they went to prison is the important thing for doing nothing at all, really, just walking on the moors. The publicity generated on that was the springboard. Social gains had to be made for the working class and the countryside. National Parks Act of 1949 was one of those gains. The mass trespass was a tremendously important occasion in the struggle for access. But it, of course, is not the entire picture. There were numerous meetings and demonstrations held. There were petitions to Parliament, the lobbying of MPs. And, of course, there was the annual demonstration in the Winnetz Pass. The, the mass trespass took place in 1932. And uh, the, the Peak District National Park wasn't uh, designated and formed until 1951. And eventually, as we know, in 2000, we had the Countryside and Rights of Way Act, which gave us, at long last, what Benny and Tom Stevenson and all the others were, were working for, was the right to roam, as we call it, on mountain and moorland. The mass trespass uh, was an important event, campaigning for all of us to be able to enjoy freedom. Uh, and they were brave people, but even now those rights are not complete by any means. Uh, and there's a, acres and acres of heath and downland where we still have no right to go. So we still want access to woodland, and we want access to the coast as well, uh, because it's, that is our right. We do say that uh, now we are suffering from uh, a new enclosure movement because green open spaces are being developed and disappearing and 
people's recreational land is being stolen from them. Uh, and we are saying to people, you do need to fight back. You do need to defend the places that you hold dear and the places where you have enjoyed informal recreation. We won't get these things through Parliament. Parliament will pass these laws once they know that they cannot deny us. We want to walk on these lands, yes, but we also want a different society. But Benny, he doesn't want a society where we walk on the moors. He wants a society like myself, which is basically those moors don't belong to us, but they belong collectively. Yeah, I think to change things, you've, you've got to upset people. That means to protest. If we've got to change things, you've got to make the government notice. So you've got to uh, protest. To actually push the cause forward, you had to do what Greenpeace calls, make, you had to make force visible. You had to do something that the opposition would stop, and that would publicise your cause. The more people who uh, advocate something, the more likely it is to happen, because we live in a democracy and members of parliament and councillors are all elected by people so the more people putting pressure on them the more likely they are to change their mind and do as we want it is vitally important but ultimately if you want to if, if a big enough threat is coming if it's coming imminently if the people in power aren't listening then often the only way to do it the only way to oppose it is by peaceful direct action and Greenpeace do that but Greenpeace aren't the only ones who do anyone can do it as long as it's peaceful as long as it's to the point and as long as you keep on the message and don't let and don't let them off more often than not you'll be successful everyone can campaign um, don't be afraid don't be intimidated you have a right as a citizen uh, to protect what you love and uh, we would urge you to feel empowered to get out there um, get other people to to work with you and be bold in what you ask for we should look after our precious landscapes on this tiny island what we have got, we've got to look after, and we've got to use it for the, for the best, for everybody. Every time I go for a walk on the moors, I silently give thanks to people like Benny and the Mass Trespassers, because without them I couldn't do that. I've been over Snowden, I've slept up on Croton, I've camped by the Wainstones as well. I've sunbathed on Kinder, been burned to a cinder, and many more things I can tell. My rucksack has often made pillows.